got the nacelles back in place here, both of them. Uh, I've got the uh, starboard side one here and then the port side one. And as you can see, all that grinding I did yesterday has paid off. It's given me a flange of around about uh, probably 40 mil on the actual nacelle itself and about 50 mil on the hull. So that'll then be laminated and then fared back in so that it looks like it's all one piece and actually came out of the mould. I wish it had been in the mould. In fact, if I'd thought of it, I could have put it in the mould, but I didn't think of it. And I wasn't sure I was going to use these until now, but the more thinking I do about bridge deck slamming and the like, I'm, I'm, oh, it is a concern. These are only 14 kilos, but 14 kilos up front is an issue on any boat. But hopefully the, the extra weight up here, or that extra 15 kilos, is not really going to be too much of a problem when it, given that we're going to have 300 kilos of chain anchor and all this other crap up the front. So we're trying to minimise weight at the front. We're also trying to mitigate that slamming. So what I'm doing now, just push, position them back in place and I'm putting some screws in. I'm going to drill, pre-drill some holes because as I drill into this, it's actually snapping my screws off and I don't want to do that. It's very hard to get these screws out. So I'm just going to pre-drill them, screw uh, a bunch of holes in so that once we get the epoxy on the underside of this flange here, we'll then be able to basically lock that in place and screw it up and, and get the form all the way along. Same deal with this one. I haven't got a screw in the back there, but it'll actually, if you look at it, it meets the hole absolutely perfectly all the way along. So there's not gonna be any issues with that adhesion. It's uh, it's more about just not having a big lump there to deal with to fare in, because I want it to look at like it was actually part of the boat. Go. Yep. I haven't mixed it yet, but it's the tubs are all ready to mix. We just, I guess, we've got to get these down. Yeah, let's get them fitted, eh? And then we can, um, I'll, I'll mix the glue and bring it down. I'm surprised how quickly we've got this part yeah, done. I was, I was actually thinking it was going to be like a month's work. It's no. probably taken. I don't know, a few days really yeah. to make them and well, to, to prepare them. A day but the, to make them, a yeah. day for me to do the, or half a day to do the inside. Yeah, yeah. Ha, half a day for you to do the sanding and prepping. Yeah, there's a few hours prepping there, but uh, but I think they're going to look pretty nice. I, I, I'm very happy with the, the look. It's going to look pretty evil from the front, like space age. For an old girl, she's going to look very space age. Oh. Well, it's a brand new old girl. <laughs> Okay, so Janet did a great job flow coating these. They've just got a really light layer of flow coat on, but it will stop mould. Don't have to be neat because they're never going to be seen again, but uh, they're neat enough. We just want to get that dust out of there, actually. We might tip it upside down, dump. We don't want any dust in it. Yeah. Eco friendly piping bags. Probably not so eco-friendly now they've got epoxy in them. They're gonna live for a million years, hopefully like the boat. But uh, yeah, there's no biodegrading <laughs> this anymore, sadly. What do you do? How do I switch the screen back to me? <laughs> All these years, Janet still struggles with the controls of this camera. <laughs> Just can't resist it, can you? No. Alright, nacelle number one in place. I need to do a bit more screwing up there just to hold it in place, a bit more tabbing. And a 
get this other one up and then Janet can go and mask up the dinette module because I'm going to be spraying in two days. I'm spraying the roof of the saloon. That bloody tidy. Yeah, we've got two thighs Yeah. Just sit it up there first. Oh, you can't actually. No, I didn't see it last Hang on, time. hang on. Just let me get my end in there. I need you to mask up the dinette module and where it's where it's sanded around on the lower side, I'll need the mask. Oh, probably about a centimetre below it, all the way along the bottom edge, underneath the sanded bit. Right. All right? Don't worry about the window side, because it don't matter if I get a bit of gel coat on that. Um, you, have to give it a, you have to give it a good clean and then mask that, and we can use that paper. Just use a plastic shoe. But I need to be able to near, walk in there so I don't want it all over the whole dinette module. Okay, just want it I want it tucked yeah. down to the bottom, yeah, we can weigh it oh, into the, on, the Where the back of. Turn that off. Turn that off. Why? I think you see the real use. That's the way it really is. Um, where the seat back comes down, I want to be able to have it like that so it's not out. So you still want it covered so you can kneel on Yeah, I need to be able to kneel on it, yeah. But you want it exactly. covered. Yeah, That's the real Ross. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 While I was putting the nacelles, gluing them in and tidying them up, Janet's been busy here. We're getting ready for some serious paint work here, Janet. Yep. Pretty excited. I am going to mask uh, the top of it as well. But what's happening here is uh, tomorrow I'm going to here, be here probably on my own. I'm just going to do some flow coating along the top of the module here, all the way around. And all the way around the bottom of the module here, all the way around the bottom here, until I get it sort of like this, where it's sort of semi done. Because once I put the finish in here, I don't want to be spraying flow coat too much in here, because there's a little bit of overspray, and then I'm going to do all this piece down in here too. Yeah, it's a great job. Well done, man. that's awesome. Well, that took some doing <laughs> for a, a little strip. So all we're going to be basically doing is spraying this little strip. But trust me, gel coat goes everywhere, or flow coat, in fact, goes everywhere. So everywhere you can see there within the yellow lines is gonna be sprayed. Um, so, so important that you mask up because every friggin' thing gets covered in it. I'm not worried about this bulkhead because it's gonna have a veneer on it, some sort of laminate or something. So all the way down around here, I'll have a drop sheet on the floor here, all the way along the bottom of the dinette module, and then all the way along the front. So if I can get all that tied in now, the day after, I can spray this. And that's bloody exciting, because that means uh, what I'll do is I'll spray this in the morning, and then tomorrow afternoon I'll just deal with a little bit of fairing. I come in with the Raptor, I can just smash it and, uh, and get it all done in probably a couple of hits, uh, probably two or three sprays. So I've got it all up along the side here. I've got a, got a flow coat all the way up here where the cabin top joins the module, and that'll integrate it all into one piece. I've actually done that over here, excuse the mess guys, but you can see here how good it comes up uh, once Janet gets in and wet and dries that gel coat, it looks like it came out of the mould and uh, you're pretty happy to get that integrated. So everywhere you see green in here is now going to be Raptor and the Ute Liner, two pack urethane, sprayed, uh, do one light spray on the first pass and then the second pass will be around about an hour later and then I'll come back 24 hours later and potentially do another one. You can actually see it here on our hard top. It's only a mild speckle, but when you go into smooth, it's it's actually a nice uh, little transition without getting too crazy. I mean, you're not getting a perfect finish, but you're actually getting a nice, sort of really, really robust and durable finish. And, and particularly in a boat, I think, I think their ingress into the boating market is gonna be quite, uh, quite phenomenal. Okay, so that's the first layer, that's brushed gel coat. There's a couple of little um, bits of fluff and stuff in that, but it's not going to matter because once you um, install your flow coat over the top, it'll sand out because I'm going to be sanding this and polishing it down. I've actually put on a lot of material. What I'm trying to do is when I spray the uh, flow coat is then get to 
to a point where I can actually just sand down to this base layer. By putting on a thicker brush coat, what you're doing is removing any pinholes out of the substrate. And then secondly, the second part is that you then spray your flow coat and then you get a nice waxed off finish like we've got here, which is easy to polish. And uh, you know, that's the whole idea. So I've also done up a land here. You do get a few brush strokes, it is a little bit rough. But what's great about that is that you've got material in there that I don't need to do any more laminating, but you've got material in there that actually acts almost like a fairing compound that's actually integrated into the flow coat because the chemistry is there. And after lunch today, once this is all tacked off, I'm going to come in and uh, dump probably four or five cupfuls of, uh, of flow coat into or on top of this and then get ready for tomorrow. We're doing it. <laughs> we are going to spray flow coat on all of the integration of the dinette module right down there into the stairs i'm going to start down there at the bottom of the stairs work my way up Oh, as it happened, I had a bit of a disaster with my gun. Friggin' thing, one of the washers blew out and uh, I had to sort of stop midstream, start spraying again, and of course my battery went flat. What's happened since you last saw me uh, two seconds ago was I've sprayed all of the margins of the dinette module and I've put on plenty of flow coat. I mean, there's tons of flow coat on. In fact, I came back with another gun after I fixed the other one and gave it a whole nother level of flow coat so now I should have more than enough there to be able to fear that back so take a good look everyone this could potentially be the last time we see this in this um in this state all right this afternoon we're gonna wrap to the ceiling so all of this hopefully is gonna be white and hopefully look really really good the only issue with Raptor is because it's a two-pack urethane and uh, we've got about 20 degrees here today is that it sets pretty quickly and because I'm only going to do a very light first coat i learnt with the hard top you can't put it on too thick you just got to spray it on walk away deal with it on your second third and fourth coat if you decide to do four coats i'll probably do two but i may do a third one tomorrow uh you must leave it for 24 hours before you can come back so i'm up for multiple masking sessions so what i'm actually doing and really importantly you can see the green tape here is actually my main line so this white above here will be sprayed with raptor i've actually sanded it and prepped this is flow coat so i've had to sand it and remove the wax very very important you remove wax with the raptor but you'll notice here that i've left a gap in the masking here because this stuff can stay so when i decide to remove the masking i just have to remove the green stuff which gives me that final line so the green one will get torn off leaving the yellow one and then in between coats, I can come back and reapply the green one, which is going to take some time because there's a lot of radiuses and corners and stuff. You can see it around the center of the mast um, post there. Basically, there's a lot of detail and, uh, and, and Stanley knifing it. So that white line there is going to have a smaller masking tape over the top, which will come off with the green, but leave the yellow one there. So I'd have to remask the whole job. So I'm pretty much ready to spray and I'm going to be spraying right up onto the window mullions as well. The actual edges of the windows I think will be smooth. I'll probably sand them smooth but I'm going to get wrapped around to that as well. All the way around here you can see here as I'm putting this brown paper down just to catch any excess. Uh, it's pretty accurate the gun but I am dreading it and then I've gone all the way around here. So there's been a lot there's going to be all um, a yellow tape all about a millimeter apart and then I'll come back Put a small one over the top and then I'll be able to remask pretty simply rather than having to do the whole job again. What are you laughing at? Every time you start the video, I get the shit effing video. <laughs> oh my god, no, I'm not. Friggin' music, eh? Just... So I walk all the way down the stairs to film something and then I realise there's music on, so I can't film when there's music on in the background. And then I can go all the way back up. It takes three times longer. So I hope you enjoy the video because we don't. <laughs> oh, well, we do, but we don't. Getting prepared here for our Raptor spray out and um, this stuff here one litre 
well, it's actually 711 mils, and then we put in uh, 250 mils or so of catalyst, or the, the two part, part B, which is this guy, the hardener, and we shake for two minutes before we start spraying. Now, very important, I've worked it out that you just can't spray for too long. So two bottles is about your limit before your gun starts to clog up if you're not working quickly. And what I learnt last time when I did the hard top was that you need to spray a very light layer on the first one. Don't go for too much body because if you go for too much, it takes too long for that solvent to flash off. And then if you apply a subsequent layer, too quickly you end up with a really rubbery texture and I had to actually pull a bit off the hard top so you, you learn your lessons um it's going to be a little bit harder this one because I've got a lot of complicated areas to spray so I'm going to be going sort of pretty hell for leather to to get them done and uh and to make sure that I don't put in too much body around where I've got corners and edges and things so we'll uh we'll give it a crack but yeah and our gun which is this guy here has an adjustable nozzle and you can see that little black mark there I've rotated it out three rotations which should give me a reasonably fine texture I don't want a super coarse texture on all these overhead environments inside our saloon because uh, uh, yeah it'd be pretty brutal on the head I reckon so we're going for a bit of a, a finer texture than you would on a ute or a car or something now I've just adjusted the gun down to about 50 psi and that'll give me hopefully a bit of a finer mist. The thing is once you adjust it down and then you start spraying the stuff because it's so thick it tends to uh, slow the pressure so you can up it a little bit just by tightening the regulator but always have a regulator on your gun when you're operating it like this. Um, I've got my compressor set about 120 psi and then I'll just step it down with the gun and that's really been critical to getting the good finishes. Preparation for this has been epic <laughs> to say the least. I think I've been going for three days just to get prepped for this we've got tarps everywhere Janet's sorting out all the drop sheets and once again you can see my technique of being able to remove a small white piece of masking tape then allows me to remove the green one so just remember Janet it's only the green one not the yellow one I won't have to tape the whole bloody thing up again I'm gonna need a drop sheet over here no. why no, we're well, doing this side first <laughs> I've just got that all sided all the way down the steps and everything and now you've just yanked it right back up again. <laughs> you know when you see the last spray I'm gets tired. A bit, Let's just gets get it a done. bit manic. Well, I'm oh, manic because I get stressed before I spray. It's no, just a shit job. It never goes well no matter how good you set up. All you can do is get as well organised and then just pray that, pray that you're going to get a decent job. So I'm going to start under here. I'm going to basically start on here where it's not quite so visible. I'll spray all this section here and I'll work my way up. I'm not worried about this panel here because this is actually going to get a, a liner on it. And, uh, and then I'll work my way up. Hopefully not shower myself in the stuff because it's urethane too, so it stinks to high hell. And as I work my way up the stairs here, I'll get in and I'll spray all this area here all the way across. Let's get into it, eh? Well, that's half and it's very very smelly so I'm gonna go in there 
But yeah, it's looking uh, very, very different. So we'll do this. So it's the first coat. I'm going to come back in tomorrow and do a second one. That's a pretty reasonable coat. It wasn't super light like I was supposed to do. I always get a bit carried away, but um, yeah, it's looking much, much better, nice and clean. I did this bit here, just gave it a light coat because um, I just thought oh, I might as well walk into a clean boat and then we can line that or do something with it later on. It really isn't fair, but it's looking pretty good. I mean, I'm very happy with the, the way the window mullions have come up. Uh, there's a little imperfection there, but you know, I'm going to get rid of that at some point, but I'm going to get out of here. It stinks. Ready to go again? <laughs> Ready? Yeah, let's get it done. Cool. So, yesterday afternoon, we sprayed the inside of the saloon. I've come in today. I've got a few unfair spots in here, and I've sanded quite a few down. Um, when you spray the Raptor, you tend to get a few little globules that you've got to knock down, but I also... By doing this, I've actually highlighted a lot of imperfections and I'm not overly concerned about them too much, but around the windows here, we're ending up with a couple of little lines and everything. So I've come in, given a, a light sand to try to get them a little more even. It isn't a perfectly fair ceiling and I'm just pretty happy with it. But sort of in a shrug and go situation because we just want to get it finished and then I'll deal with it later on. Uh, the majority of it looks really good. Uh, there's a couple of little spots around the window mullions I'm not overly happy with. Um, and I got rid of quite a few little uh, imperfections down around here. But yeah, it looks pretty good. And I, I do like the texture of it. I think the texture's great. Um, but this second coat is going to really make a big difference to how it's going to look. And we got this part just a light spray just to make it look like it was finished. Even though it's not finished, isn't it? No, it would have just... Nice driven me insane if that had to be yellow and then white so anyway we're going to give it another spray we've got another three bottles now it's probably about another two and a half liters of raptor to go on We go down at the fun bit. Well, this looks just so much better than it did this morning. Look at that. How good's that? Beautiful fine edge around there. So we've got a lot of polishing to do now, darling. <laughs> There's always polishing to be done. Good old for the turning. It's got to be polished to smooth. I've decided to make this glossy. 